Good morning, it's Brenda Crimmy with AMZ Alliance, and I'd like to talk to you today about being approached by Amazon to buy your product. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? So I'm hoping today to arm you with the information so you could make a, an informed decision on whether it's right for your business. I do have a little PowerPoint slide I wanna show you because I'm gonna be sharing some information. It's probably easier to have a reference to that, so let me switch over to my screen here, and we're gonna go through this PowerPoint. Click the buttons. Here we go. There. Okay, so what we want to talk about today is um, whether or not, if you're approached by Amazon to buy your product, it's a good thing, like I mentioned. And it's referred to seller central or vendor central. Um, so I want to talk about what that is and what it looks like to you. So first of all, define Seller Central is uh, simply selling on the Amazon platform. So you open up your professional, professional selling account. It's $39.99 a month. Um, and you fill in the blanks. You list your product. You all do all the promotion and things like that. That's called a third-party seller. Um, you open and manage the seller account, like I mentioned, and you sell your products directly to the Amazon customer. So you're, managed, you're, you're, you're responsible for either fulfilling those orders or doing FBA. Vendor Central is the platform in which when Amazon buys your products, you then log in and manage your account through Vendor Central. Um, in this case, you're, you're considered the first party vendor and you act as a supplier to Amazon. Amazon buys your product and then Amazon sells directly to your customer, the Amazon customer. So it's completely hands off for you. Basically, Amazon buys the product from you at a wholesale price. And we're going to go into the details of what each of those are. So an example, when you're looking at a listing, start paying attention to the listings when you're shopping on Amazon so you get an idea of what it looks like from the eyes of the seller. So when you see underneath the price sold by a company name and fulfilled by Amazon, that is a product that's managed by Seller Central. Now it might be sold by, in this case, Richard's Expo and fulfilled by Richard. Expo, in which case Richard's Expo is managing the fulfillment as well. In this particular case, it's sold by Richard's Expo and fulfilled by Amazon. So that's a prime product, an FBA product sold within Amazon. We're not going to get into more detail about that today, but just know that those type of options are managed through the, the typical seller central platform. Here is a listing example of Vendor Central. When it says shipped from and sold by Amazon, that means that Amazon owns those products. Now it could be um, that Amazon bought the products um, or it could be that Amazon owns that product as far as that's their brand. You've seen um, Amazon deals and things like that. Amazon has started launching their own brands. And so it could be one of those two ways, but those are managed through the Vendor Central platform. So what's the difference between Seller Central and Vendor Central? First of all, I want to talk about, I'm going to, like I said in the beginning, I want to give you the information because um, a lot of times people think it's a great idea to sell their products to Amazon because it would be completely hands off and shoo, I've got other things to worry about. Um, so when Amazon approaches and says, hey, you know, I want to buy your product, you kind of like are swooned and oh, that's a great idea. So let's talk a little bit about the details as to the pros and cons of each. So in Seller Central, remember this is where you maintain complete control of your product, you create the selling account, um, you get 14 day payment terms. So every Two days or every two weeks, like clockwork, Amazon makes that deposit into your account for the sales that happen during up to that two week period. So it's very consistent. There's nothing you have to do. It's on auto. You just get it directly deposited into your account. That's a good thing. So cash flow is a huge piece of a benefit of Seller Central because you're getting your money in 14 days. Um, you have complete control over your inventory. If um, Amazon asks you if you had a vendor central, if they had a deal with you, they would then ask you to send certain amount of units at a time. Um, and that may not work within your cash flow to have those units available to you. So when you're in Seller Central, you have complete control over your inventory. You may send a couple dozen units at a time. Um, you have complete control over your pricing. This is a huge piece when it comes to Seller Central. 
you can set the price based on what's best for your business, what's going on with the competition. You can change it daily. I don't recommend daily, but you can change it as often as you need to. You do that split testing, which price works best, but you have complete control over the pricing. Um, and because you have complete control over the pricing, you have higher sales margins. You're selling this at retail. They take their fees and then you maintain the margins. You, you receive the margins. So when you have control of that, then that affects your cash flow in a positive way. So you have higher sales margins. You also have control over promotions in Seller Central. So let's say you have a product and it's not necessarily ranking the way that you want to, you're not seeing the sales that you want to, and you wanna try out some different promotional options, you can run those promotions. You can run them for a week, you can run them for five days, you can run them for a month, whatever you decide you wanna do, you have complete control over those promotions. And then again, control over listings. Um, when you have control over listing, you create the listing, you manage the listing, you can change your, your, your uh, keywords and play to see what works best for you. Um, so the, the point that I want to make when you look on the pros that I listed or the details that I listed on Seller Central, you see the word control a lot. So in Seller Central, you have complete control of your product and what you're going to do with that product, how you're going to manage that product. Now let's look at the vendor central side. I'm gonna move my little image up here to make sure I'm not, there we go. Okay, so in the vendor central side, first of all, it's by invitation only. Um, you usually get an invitation from Amazon by having some type of sales history on Amazon, but sometimes they might see your product off on another platform because they have scouts out there looking for products that they might be interested in. So maybe they saw your product within social media or some other avenue. Um, they give you an invitation and say, hey, you know, would you like to become a vendor of Amazon? Now, the first thing I want to point out is cash flow. If cash flow is important to you as a business, Amazon has a 60 to 90 day payment term. So what that means is they're going to have you supply them the product and then you'll get the payment within 60 to 90 days of them receiving that product. So that might be something that's important to you if cash flow is tight. So keep that in mind. Amazon's also going to negotiate wholesale pricing. Uh, so they're going to offer what you, they think they should pay for this product, and it's going to be a wholesale price. So your margins may not be as good. Um, this is the, the next point I really want to stress, is you have little control over the retail price, how they're going to sell that product, what price they're going to sell that product at. Um, and that's called MAP pricing, uh, manufactured authorized pricing. And what happens with Amazon is, is it's their, their platform and they want to be the, one of the, the lower advertised prices for the product. So if they see your product out somewhere else on sale, or maybe they see a lot of competition at a lower price, well, they own the product. So it's within their right and it says so within their contracts to lower that selling price to whatever they deem it's necessary. Now, this might be important to you, especially if you are selling to other um, boutiques and so forth on a wholesale basis because if you're telling your boutiques they have to honor your map pricing and then they go their customers go on to Amazon and see at a lower price that may not go over so well so that you know kind of affects your integrity as a brand so remember that you'll have little control over pricing Amazon sets the price of that product and because you have little control of what the pricing is the, the product selling for and the wholesale pricing you'll have uh, lower sales margins so you'll have to decide if that's worth your within your business model uh, to manage um, there's also inventory sales gaps so like I said Amazon will go ahead and order the product based on what they perceive as the sales velocity of that product and they might underestimate and they might overestimate so you know one thing that happens is Amazon's got their hand in several different products they've got a lot going on so they may find that uh, your product is out of stock for a few weeks before they put in another order for you get it checked in and available to your customers so you may be losing out on sales because of that. And the most important, and that's why I highlighted this on this, this particular uh, slide, 
is the biggest misconception is if Amazon buys my product, I'm, if I'm a vendor of Amazon, I get straight to the top of ranking on sales pages. And that's simply not the truth. Amazon um, buys your product, you create the detail page, and it's up to you to manage and, and pay for the marketing of that particular product. So it is not a go pass to the top of page rankings and therefore equaling in so many more sales than what you would get otherwise. So this is important in summary, what I wanna tell you about this is that in Seller Central, you maintain complete control of the process and in Vendor Central, Amazon maintains complete control of the process. Um, now, why would one person want to choose Seller Central versus Vendor Central? Well, the first thing that comes to mind as a product developer is that I, you may just not have the time to manage the products on um, Amazon. And so the Vendor Central certainly may seem appealing to you because then you're not having to spend any time in Amazon's managing that. Well, I want to give you some diff diff a different point of view on that. So. Like I said, choose what's, what, which is right for your business, make informed decisions, but the alternative option is to maintain complete control of your listing and work with an Amazon selling consultant instead. So if you don't have the time to manage your listing, hire an Amazon selling consultant like AMZ Alliance. There's lots of us out there. You can Google help with selling on Amazon to find other options out there. Um, and then you can maintain complete control of the selling process. So I hope I've kind of helped debunk some of the questions about selling on Amazon versus Vendor Central. <clears throat> Excuse me. I know it's a short uh, slide, but I think it's all informative in itself, and it's an important information to know. So next time, if you're approached by Amazon to sell your product, then you can make an informed decision whether it's right for your business model. Until next time.